Welcome everybody to Madden 22. Today we're taking a look at CPU versus CPU gameplay. Seeing how it plays for those of you that like to play the game this way as I do in my franchises on this channel. Welcome everybody to the channel. My name is Mr. Hurricane. I make franchise content here on YouTube. Been making series for a long time and I've really come to enjoy the CPU CPU experience ever since like Madden 18 when I discovered that, hey, I think this might be the best gameplay you can get out of Madden. Now, I don't play CPU, CPU in the traditional sense. I do everything in slow simulation for the fast pace of play, for the broadcast angle. So, this is what we're going to focus on in today's video, a full game in CPU, CPU, and you can see how the gameplay plays out. And I'll do my best to let you see some of these presentation elements as well. Obviously, this one here is pretty much the same. I do think presentation seems a bit better this year, especially pre-game. Obviously, when you're in CPU, CPU, you still have the momentum meter at the very top. Starting a little bit with the home team, as Ezekiel Elliott is brought down, no gain on first down. This is what I like here about CPU, CPU. Not choosing plays means that we can get through things a lot quicker. Screen pass here for Zeke, not behind his blocking. A big part of this is I just want to see how the game plays because I think that for the last four Maddens I've been playing games this way, this is the best experience gameplay wise you can get against the computer. By the way, this is on all pro difficulty, simulation style with no slider edits. I have not edited any sliders beyond injury and field goal like accuracy and power in these franchises that I've done on the channel. And so I've played over the last four Maddens hundreds of games like this and it's been the best I think that you can get in the game as far as the gameplay goes. So we got the Cowboys and the Chargers today. Herbert getting out of the pocket. And this is what I've seen mostly. Quarterbacks getting outside. Still with a throw first mentality. Not really looking to scramble much. Justin Herbert second down and 12. And he's going to throw this one way downfield. And going up for it. No way he caught that. It's Keenan Allen. Two defenders in the area. How does he come down with that? I have seen a lot of aggressiveness out of the CPU thus far in the games I've played throwing downfield. First and goal for Herbert, back of the end zone, that's easy right there, touchdown, LA, it's Jared Cook. I do like here that even in Super Sim in the low right, you can still tell what M factors for momentum are active. There are usually some things you lose here in Super Sim, like make, making coach adjustments, you can always back out and do them from here but I don't believe that it always listens to what you're wanting in these situations let's go aggressive strip ball aggressive tackling and under the score bug we should be able to see if that is actually active in super sim I'd like to check that out for myself Prescott throwing on first down. He's going to get out of there and throw it all the way across the field. See, he needs to be scrambling there. Not still trying to throw it necessarily, if it doesn't make sense, and that really did not. I like stepping up there to dump it off underneath. That's pretty good. Okay, the coaching adjustment there, I think, is working. Interesting. I haven't been messing with those much in super sim games for a while because I know there was a Madden where all of that was ignored but 
Maybe I can add that to my Super Sim, Slow Sim franchise rebuilds. Prescott second down. Underneath here, and this is going to be a first. What I have noticed as well in the games that I've watched is that the pass rush does not feel very strong. I haven't seen a lot of sacks. But I have seen the defensive line actually do a pretty good job in the running game. Not much of an injury sequence here. A lot of these players still just walking off. Kind of the same as it's been there. And I imagine if you see them on the sideline, that's usually a good sign. If they're going into the locker room, they're not coming back for that game. Second down and one now for Dallas. A play fake for Prescott. And he's going to look long. That's wide open. Nobody covered Michael Gallup. Don't forget about Gallup if you're the defense or if you're drafting in fantasy. It's easy to get caught up in Cooper and CeeDee Lamb. Everybody's going to overlook Michael Gallup. First and goal from the seven. Here's Dak, and he's in trouble. He shrugs off Bosa, loses the football. This is Dallas Cowboys football right here, losing 15 yards. All right, you got Bosa in the zone now, so you should see him dominate. Zeke cutting out to the right and taken down at the 16. All right, third and goal from the 16. How aggressive do they get? Well, it's a screen and not much blocking for Elliott. I really wish for slow sim here they would give you an angle behind the kicker or just a better view to see these, a more broadcast-like kicking experience. Well, that kick is good. Running to the right side here, big opening. This could be trouble, but that's a touchdown saving tackle on Austin Eckler. Oh, I like that last week uh, stat line there popping up. That's cool. There's so much they could be doing with presentation between plays, before possessions, coming out of halftime, pre-game. Herbert with the quick pass for Keenan Allen first down. Uh-oh, Austin Eckler once again into the secondary and he gets across midfield. Here is what it looks like between quarters. It does show snaps and yardage. Kind of cool there. Now on the M factor bar at the top, there is an option to like hit R2 and I think see the M factors and more detail as Herbert gets sacked. It's Osa, Odigizua. But in slow sim, hitting R2 right now is actually not doing anything. So that's where like when you're in coach mode, traditional CPU, CPU, you get a bit more control there oh boy that is not a good throw at all from Herbert and it's intercepted by Anthony Brown well that's my first crash of Madden 22 well we have to play a new game because that one crashed and trying to resume it just led to it crashing again that was in cloud franchise we are offline now new matchup Patriots and the Chargers. Let's see if we can get through this one. By the way, for those of you that like to play uh, franchise the way I do here with the Super Sim, looks the same. All right, let's get back into the game now. We have the Patriots and the Chargers. Cam Newton's at quarterback. Yeah, that's a nice spinning catch near the first down marker. I want to see this new two tight end offense I'm expecting from them with Hunter Henry and Janu Smith. Here's Cam, and he'll extend. Now Cam should be running. He does and slides down. Nice play. On the carry here, Sony Michelle, and he shrugs off the first defender and the second going out of bounds. They can't take him down. It's a play fake on first down. A lot of time to dump it off. And that's a catch along the sideline. Running this one to the right side here again. 
This time it's James White showing some power. Cam third and one. That is a first down. Not trying to do too much. Newton on first down. Here he is scrambling again and then dumping it off for a minimal gain. Based on what I've seen so far, like pressure really is forcing the quarterbacks to do a lot of moving outside the pocket. Which can be really good, but can also be very sloppy. Newton third and 16. Got to stretch the defense here, I think. As he scrambles out, he's going to run with it. This is more scrambling than I am used to seeing in Madden. Let's see how good this punt is. Seen a lot of uh, variety in the punts. Nice. At the 13-yard line. There you go. I want to see that every time a drive begins. Austin Eckler, 3 for 11. Maybe show Austin Eckler, too. That one is contested by Stephon Gilmore, and it's incomplete. I formation behind Justin Herbert. Now we're getting the play action. Herbert's got time, and what happened there? My initial impressions of what I've seen from the gameplay, now I haven't played a ton. I've probably seen about 150 snaps total or so. But as Herbert connects downfield, and there goes Keenan Allen. He is still on his feet inside the 30 and eventually stopped. But gameplay has felt sloppier than Madden 21 to me, and that's what I'm comparing it to is Madden 21 next gen. I thought was a solid first step with the movement with frostbite and what I'm seeing here is a little more awkward animations some weird decisions by players and some uh, weird physics as well hasn't all been bad but so far my impression is that 21 was better as far as like gameplay fluidity and just not seeing weird stuff all the time. That one is caught in the end zone. It's Mike Williams. And the Chargers get on the board. Here's another thing I'm seeing way too much of I want to show here. Defensive backs are not going for swats. They are not trying to make the right play. They're trying to get the interception, and I'm seeing it anytime they're close. Gilmore is behind a six foot five wide receiver who's going to box him out. So what does he do here? Don't punch through his hands. The right play can be made there, but they're always going for the interceptions. It's like they're not aware of the receiver. Here's Newton on first down. Uh-oh, there's the pressure. Uchenna Wosu. Away team has trouble catching. I wonder if we'll see a drop on this drive then. Newton from the pocket, overthrown, and it's third and long. Nope, not trying anything here. Just a one-yard pickup. Let's see what this start a drive sequence gives us. Any stats here? Everybody's running out. Tell me how Herbert's doing. Not getting stats this time. Justin Herbert on first down as somebody got pushed back. Very close to him. That's a gain of about nine for Allen. Timeout. When do they call it here? What's the time on the clock right now? Oh, 61 seconds. We're used to that. One timeout left here for the Chargers. This is a good chance to see the clock management at, at play. Uh-oh, Herbert! I've seen some weird dives like that. Some misses. That should have been a sack right there. 
Or at least they should have had an interaction. Second down and 10 for Herbert. Up sideline, it's overthrown. Thought that one was going to be picked for a moment. Third down and 10, 51 seconds. I really want to see them convert here so I can see clock management. Caught, Keenan Allen. And he's taken down in bounds. Okay, how do they manage the timeout here? That's a pretty big gain. It takes a little while to get set. You're better off using the timeout there because you just lost 20 seconds. 18 seconds to go. And Herbert incomplete. Second down and 10. Where's the check down to Eckler there? Wow, a hit stick fumble and the Patriots have it. No points here for the Chargers. All right, let's see this second half play out here. Seven nothing, Chargers. James White inside, and that's a gain of four. This is Cam on second down, and he will move to his right and throw an accurate ball to the 33. So it is cool that we're seeing quarterbacks move more. I like to see them move up in the pocket as well and not just out. But we are seeing some more, you know, mistakes when they do decide to uh, leave the pocket. That's a nice play, though, dropping Bosa in coverage. Play fake for Justin Herbert. The play action blocking has been really good for him. And there is the dump off to Eckler I was waiting for. Herbert. The offensive line upgrades are paying off overall. And then he throws it away. Running left here. That's a big opening. And close to a first down goes Eckler. On third down and inches. Eckler gets the first down easily. Taken down by Gilmore. I have liked some of the tackle animations I've seen. Some good smooth wrap-up ones. Not just hitting. First and ten. They'll try to run it left now. Ooh, I... I like how Eckler approached that interaction. One of my issues with Madden has been running backs not really playing physically the right way. And now Eckler isn't like a power back or anything. But I do like him, you know, trying to put a shoulder into him and making sure his momentum carries him forward. That's, that's a nice play right there. I love me that two-yard gain. I want to watch some more physical running backs and how their styles play out in here. That's caught. So I got to get some Derrick Henry gameplay at some point. Third down and inches now. 18 seconds on the third quarter clock. Herbert to the air. Wide open. Catch and run inside the 30. There's one of the depth receivers I like on this team. That's Jalen Guyton. Herbert first and 10. Out to Mike Williams and taken down by Gilmore. Keeping this one on the ground. That's a nice play made at the 17-yard line. 7 for 30 for Austin Eckler. And again, third and short. They've been in these all day. It's Herbert. No! He kind of ran into him there. And they're going to say down by contact. The QB... Like, pathfinding and angles they take here have not been optimal. Like, go over here. Not inviting contact. All right, we have part of the Chargers experience on display here. They just made a massive mistake late in the game. And it's Cam Newton now throwing. And nice little turn up the sideline there. That does seem to be a bit better. I want the full Chargers experience here. I'm ready. Second down and three for Cam Newton. It's a play fake. Come on, take a chance downfield, Cam. Or he's going to run with it. And he slides down, getting first down yardage. Third and inches, empty set. Cam throws it. That's caught. And everything here has been coming out underneath. 
So you got different teams with different game plans and play styles, and I have not seen a team with so many quick hitting throws as I have with this Patriots offense today. Most of it's run through the tight ends too. It's how you would kind of expect it to be. First and 10, uh-oh, Cam. He's gonna get away from one defender. Bosa's there, he comes up empty, and Cam gets out of bounds? Not used to seeing quarterbacks run out of bounds. I gotta know if that happens more often. Do they do a better job of protecting themselves? Cause we've seen slides. That was kinda cool. Cam on first down, sets up the screen. That looks like the screens from Madden 21, which was a bad screen game. Very bad screen game. Underneath here, and that is complete. 40 yards on 12 attempts. We have a timeout called here. How much is on the clock? They call the timeout with a minute 41. I love that. There's no reason to wait until inside a minute. Not sure you had to call a timeout there, but it is saving time. And Cam's going to go deep. One on one, out the back of the end zone. All right, third down and five. Scratch that, fourth and five, gotta have it. Playing off coverage, quick slant, caught first down. Too much of a cushion there. Chargers fans, this probably feels too familiar right now. Newton gets it away, dumped off, complete inside the 30. When do they call the second timeout? They don't call it here with a minute, which has been what they've done for 20 years. Cam, oh boy, that's caught, Bosa missed. Why is he covering so much? 40 seconds left. It's Newton with eight in coverage. To his left, now to his right. Kendrick Bourne, Bosa is in coverage so much. This is that new Brandon Staley defense. This is why they uh, brought him over. To get Bosa in coverage. Second and five. Newton in trouble for a moment. Down to the back. No. 25 seconds. Third down. Cam sacked at the 17. Uchenna Nwosu. All right, Chargers. You're just one play away from sealing this one. Perhaps it's a new era with Justin Herbert and the revamped offensive line and Brandon Staley. Fourth and ten. Cam's got to make a play. And he can't. It's out of the back of the end zone. Justin Herbert can hardly believe it. The team did not let him down. And the game can end there. <laughs> that was a pretty fun finish there. Some good and some bad here in the gameplay. It does feel like we're in desperate need of like a day one patch. It does to me have a, a beta gameplay feel to it. Let's see this end of game sequence now. Come on, that animation. Too many hundreds of times seeing that. I want to see player of the game. I know they have it, but you only see it show up like twice a year, if that. So we got the... Uh, the posing for the camera. We're used to that. The new post-game summary here. They do track a few interesting stats like times quarterback pressured. Completion rate as well. Which I don't think was tracked accurately at all. That was at 0.7. And yeah, that's if I threw the ball. And here's your gameplay. I know it's not like a sim length game and I went through a few drives or that first drive really quickly not actually watching it play out but I feel like the stats in slow sim have been overall solid these last four years better than user versus CPU and I've already done four franchises like this so I'm just looking to see if anything is drastically different and uh, I wouldn't say anything was at all Oh, this is pretty cool here. It shows you the results of your goals as well after the game. So you can see your game plan goals, your staff goals. Did you get to any of these to unlock the, uh, the talent points that you can use for upgrading your coaches? Staff points there in the upper right hand corner. Now there's one more thing I wanted to quickly get through here that I wanted to experiment with. 
so when you're in super sim here you can see the momentum meter at the top and that's where it's always going to start just with the home team now as we get through drives here in this style of super simming that momentum meter isn't moving at all now I'm not sure if that's an oversight on their part or if they didn't want that interacting with the super simming like this but say now it's 2110 things ought to be different you get into the game and now that stuff is active now a lot of that is just for like you know a lot of that is hard to replicate I think if you're not actually in game but while you are in game I guess momentum isn't going to move until you back out I guess just so you're aware all right let's get a little bonus action in here we have a game I'm looking forward to we have two teams that always seem to lose in entertaining ways and I think are very similar teams as far as uh, like recent franchise history and just expectations versus reality we have Minnesota and the Chargers we got the battle here of the rookie of the year and the best rookie of 2020 Justin Jefferson top of the screen let's see how this one plays out here Minnesota's up one Dalvin's going down at the 40 yard line Ooh, just got the screen set up there in time and Dalvin breaks out the stiff arm but we're not seeing like the blocks get in front of the running back on those screens so they're not going to be all that effective if that keeps up stretch Dalvin nice tackle by Derwin James gotta see if the Chargers can get this one back Dalvin left side and covering up the football Dalvin Cook inside and he's taken down by Bosa not much oh a play fake they're gonna switch it up here Cousins has time what's this old line and no one got open that doesn't make any sense the Vikings can't get open but they can't pass protect but not in this case so it looks like we're going to have a nice two-minute drill scenario here we'll see how the Chargers run the clock with a four-point deficit all right Justin Herbert gotta take the Chargers down the field on first down he's in trouble and taken down Michael Pierce now 93 yards to go in the end zone now Herbert barely gets it away and Eckler was out of bounds third down and 21 now Herbert complete it is Allen and that gives them more of a chance on fourth down 106 left to go can the Chargers make this an interesting end to the video Herbert's gotta have it he will barely get the pass away it's a wobbler and it's intercepted Minnesota will hold on to get the win well everybody that is a look here at CPU CPU gameplay in Madden 22 using slow sim this is how I like to play my franchises here on this channel to get the most ratings based results and I'm looking forward to starting a new franchise when the scouting update is out and until then I'll try to find some fun ways to pass the time but let me know what you thought down below what do you think of Madden 22 so far for me I'm really hoping there's a nice day one patch that can smooth out some things because there are some areas of the game that I don't think are as good as Madden 21 and that really shouldn't be the case. But I'll have more Madden 22 content coming your way soon. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed today's content, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.